You've all heard about the medicine atropine and its value in self-aid against the effects of nerve gas poisoning. Our purpose here is to show you where to find your atropine, discuss the set containing it, and illustrate the steps you must take in using it to get the proper effect of the medicine. In your protective mass carrier, you will find this metal container. It's called Protection and Treatment Set Chemical Warfare Agents M5A1. The set was originally designed to contain four tubes of ointment used in decontamination and protection against blistering war gases. Now that nerve gases are with us, you will find instead of one of the tubes of M5 ointment, this plastic container. Now in this container is your atropine serrette. And here's what's in the serrette. crystalline drug, and a powerful one. It is itself a poison. Now here it is in liquid solution, as we will find it. Atropine is not new, being known to the medical profession for over 400 years. You've heard of atropine as the first important item of self-aid in defending yourself against the effects of nerve gas poisoning. Your atropine comes in a little package, which is both container and injection device, as we shall see. It's called a serrette. That's what this is. And it's a familiar gadget to all members of the medical corps. The serrette is used for the storage and administration of all kinds of medicines that have to be injected into the body. so that the medication may be absorbed quickly and act rapidly like this. Much more rapidly than it can act when simply taken into the mouth and swallowed. Now here's an enlarged drawing of the serrette and the plastic container it comes in. This is the plastic container. Now the cap is removed, and out comes the serrette. The plastic needle cover is removed like this, by unscrewing. Now this is just a soft metal tube, similar to the one your toothpaste comes in. Let's see how it works. The liquid atropine is sealed in the tube by a soft metal diaphragm. Here. There's a wire called a stylet running through the needle. Now the stylet is used to puncture or open the diaphragm so that the liquid may escape from the tube through the needle. Now, here's the procedure for breaking the seal or the diaphragm. First, be sure you hold the syrette by the hub here, not by the soft body of the tube. If you hold the syrette by the tube, the liquid contents may accidentally squirt out when the seal is broken. So do not hold the syrette by the tube when you are breaking the seal. Remember, hold the syrette by the hub here. Next. Push the wire stylet into the seal with a firm pressure and with a twisting motion like this. The pressure on the stylet now is continued until you feel this seal give way. But don't discard the wire stylet yet, even if you think you felt the stylet puncture the seal. Make sure the seal is broken by squeezing a drop of liquid from the tube up to the tip of the needle. And only when you see that drop of fluid at the needle point can you be certain that the seal has been broken. Now here's something to keep in mind. If you only thought you broke the seal and then discarded the wire stylet, or even if you just pulled the wire out without checking, 
you would never be able to stick the wire back into the fine caliber needle again in time to do yourself any good. Therefore, for your own protection, always check it. Always squeeze a drop of atropine to the needle point. And when you see it, the serrette is ready for use. Then you can discard the stylus. Now I shall open a real serrette and prepare to use it. I shall repeat the procedure I have just described. Now I know it's open, I can discard the stylet. Stick the needle straight into any convenient muscle. The easiest place is the side of your thigh. That is where I would inject it if I really need it a dose of atropine. Stick the needle straight in and all the way in. Now simply squeeze the tube until empty and you have the dose of medicine you need. There is really not much to it. During the Army's constant search for better and more field-worthy injection instruments, other devices than the serrette have been tested and made for use. At this time, the serrette seems to be the best of them. Another injection device that has been stocked in medical supplies is the ampin. This is how it looks. It also contains atropine. But the Ampin has a partially automatic action, as you will soon see. Now, if you find in your set an Ampin instead of a Sirette, you can recognize and identify it by its own distinctive characteristics, which will become apparent as I tell you how to use it. Now, by pulling on this string, like this, the bottle, which is the Ampin, is released. Now let's see what the component parts of the Ampin are. The needle has a plastic cover. It is removed by pulling. Now the Ampin does not have a wire style in the needle. It isn't necessary. The Ampin bottle has a long glass neck and the rubber tubing protects the seal. Now, the bottle part of the Ampin is about half full of atropine solution. And this empty space in the bottle isn't really empty. This space contains helium gas under pressure. Here's how the Ampin works. Turn the bottle bottoms up, like this. Now, insert the needle into a muscle and break the neck of the bottle. Watch this. Gas pressure in the bottle automatically forces the atropine into the muscle when the neck of the bottle is broken. But remember, the gas can only force the atropine solution out when the bottle is bottoms up. There is one big mistake that can be made when using the Ampin. bottle is at any other position except bottoms up when the neck of the bottle is broken you will get only a shot of helium gas but no atropine you see if the level of the atropine solution is below the neck of the bottle there is no way for the gas to force the liquid out so don't do this and don't do this The needle is in the proper position, but the bottle is at such an angle that the liquid level is again below the neck. Only gas can escape, and the medicine is useless to you.
Remember this about the injection technique for the amp. Make sure the bottle is bottoms up before and after you break the neck of the bottle. When you do, this happens. The atropine is injected into your muscle where it belongs. A lot of people have a lot of wrong ideas about needles. Among the many protective mechanisms that nature has built into all of us, there's a strong dislike of sticking sharp objects into our skin. Well, this is normal and natural. And that is why there are classes for you on the proper technique of injecting the needle. One word of caution about injecting yourself. You've all had shots from the medics. Often they pinch up your skin to stick in the needle. After they do this, if they want to inject medicine into your muscle, they change the direction of the needle after it goes through the skin and then push it into the muscle. The medics know what they're doing. You wouldn't find it easy to execute this pinched up skin technique. And for that reason, forget it. If you were to use the needle for the first time on yourself in an actual nerve gas attack, instead of here in the classroom, the hesitation caused by this natural reluctance to break your skin would use up too many of the very few seconds you have at best to help yourself. That is why there are training exercises for you. If all people were not born with this normal protective instinct, these training exercises would not be necessary. The serrette used for training contains only a neutral sterile liquid, no atropine. The first self-injection is admittedly a tough one for you to accomplish. You just have to make up your mind to do it. Anyone can think up many reasons why the needle won't break the skin. Once you have done it, however, Without help from anyone, that mental block is forever broken. You will then know that the fine, sharp needle does not hurt, goes in easily and quickly. And most important, you will be trained properly to give yourself protection without costly hesitation. Here's the proper way to inject the atropine needle. Push the needle all the way in. It won't be difficult, not nearly as much as you think. Following this technique, you cannot help but put the atropine into the muscle where it belongs and where it will act the fastest to give you relief from nerve gas poisoning symptoms. If you stick your needle in straight up and down, you will get the fastest possible effects from the atropine. If you stick the needle in any other way, you will almost certainly succeed in getting the atropine only just under or in the skin where it will take twice as long to act. And twice as long may be far too long for you to survive nerve gas poisoning. Now let's nail down the points you need to know and remember on the use of injection instruments as far as your own personal self-aid is concerned. First. The atropine serrette. Hold it by the hub, here. Make certain you have broken the seal before removing the wire stylet. Push the needle all the way in, straight up and down, and squeeze the tube until all the atropine is emptied into your muscle where it should be. Second, the ampin. Hold the ampin, bottoms up, straight up and down. Push the needle in all the way, and then make certain the bottle is still bottoms up before and after you break the neck of the bottle. 
This is the only position in which the gas will force the atropine out of the bottle and into your muscle where it must go. Whatever you think about needles, they can help you stay alive. These needles are your best possible friends if and when you need them.